In the last episode of Building Resilience, we were exploring a complex system of floor beams, framing a floor on top of them, and framing walls on top of that. We discovered that while this little addition has only three walls, each one has a very different job, so each one has a very different profile. The most interesting wall was wall type two, the shear wall. Okay, so this wall uh, is our wall type two. It's a shear wall. We have OSB on the outside of this wall, as well as the inside of this wall. And then we'll have our zip, or we have our zip on top of that layer of OSB. So essentially we end up with three layers of 7 16th OSB on this wall. It's heavy, uh, it's not gonna move, um, and that's important because hanging from this opening is going to be a giant glass box. They're sheathing the walls with Zip Systems exterior insulated sheathing product called Zip R12, but they're not wrapping the house with it just yet. First, they need to get an airtight and watertight lid on the house so the family below doesn't get cold and wet. And as usual in Minneapolis in winter, cold and snow are in the forecast. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> What's not so cool is that they found a layer of soggy, spongy muck under the roof covering. Turns out there were some hidden leaks that were isolated, but not victimless. The rubber roof that was up here had some holes in it. The buffalo board was soaked, but the tar paper that was mopped under here um, kept all this really pretty dry, uh, brittle, and old, which is ultimately a great thing. So we also have a huge opportunity now. We have this like two foot cavity between the old roof deck uh, and the plaster ceiling below. Uh, and there's currently, I'm gonna say, oh, what have I got in here? So we got about two inches of beautiful cellulose in here. Not enough for Minnesota. Uh, but we have this giant void. And so what we're gonna do is come back, net all of this on both sides, and fill the cavity full of blown in fiberglass insulation. We'll end up with 24 inches of insulation. So uh, that's pretty darn close to R80. I'll do the math later. It's, it's more than enough and uh, the house should, should uh, be pretty comfortable. So we're gonna insulate between the ceiling and the subfloor here, but this is not the finished surface. Over the top of this is all the framing, another layer of our zip sheeting, roof decking, that's all gonna get taped. So our air barrier is gonna be up here and then we'll actually have a small pocket of dead air space, but impossible to vent, we're not gonna vent it. Uh, and then we'll have about R80 sitting below that. So this old balloon frame house, we, we knew basically how they built it, but we weren't 100% sure until we opened it up. And we had a bunch of theories on how they built this roof structure and none of them were right. Uh, so what we found was that they actually, uh, here, here we've got our top plate, but our roof starts below it right here and slowly moves up over the top plate until it's a full six inches above the top plate on the opposite end. The entire roof structure is hanging off of a ledger attached to the wall. Really, that's pretty typical for balloon frame, but uh, this was somebody put a lot of time, thought and energy into making this work. And it, you know, for 102 years, it's worked really well. With the old rubber and asphalt roofing stripped off the 102 year old deck, the roof framing plan is set in motion. Steve will frame a simple, low slope hipped roof atop the existing one. The hip style with such a low slope will give the appearance of a flat roof when seen from the street. Over the framing is zip system roof sheathing taped at the seams. This will complete the primary air barrier as well as sealing against water. Basically, after the roof is sheathed, it's also airtight and dried in. All of that begins, though, with exploring what's inside that can of worms before it's opened. Step one is to convince the cameraman to set down a camera and pick up a grade stick. After benchmarking all the corners, Steve takes a peek at the middle, just for shucks and giggles. Looks like there's quite a belly to this roof. Quite a belly. Quite a belly. 
Step one of framing the roof is setting the ridge beam. Steve levels a ridge beam across, temporarily tacking it in place so that he can test drive various rafter scenarios. I'm open to that not being set. I'm trying to get a, a rough idea. Inevitably, that includes sentences that trail off to see what my pitch is. Because basically... And a carpenter muttering numbers like... No, that's not going to work. 17 and a half. 17. 17 and a half. 17 and a half. What he is nervous about is that the addition also has a flat roof, and this little ridge should not extend above the addition's roof. The reason Steve was scratching his head and muttering numbers is because the trusses for that roof haven't arrived yet. With a rough idea of what's about to unfold and trust in the blueprints, he frames the ridge and braces it level. Now that he's committed to a number, trusting that the trusses will be what they're supposed to be, the trusses have arrived. So they stack them on the old roof for the time being. With the trusses on the roof and the crane slipping them into place, the crew drops them in, braces them plumb, and spaces them evenly. Now comes the tricky part, the end truss. The guys added sheathing to the outside of the truss and also screwed on the giant barge rafter, which creates an 18 inch overhang. It's heavy, unwieldy, and unfortunately out of reach of the crane, so they have to set it in place the old fashioned way. One inch and near heart attack at a time. Now they brace the top quickly and toenail the bottom to the line snapped on the top plate. Next comes the Zip System roof sheathing. On such a flat roof, running roof sheathing is a lot like running subflooring. Begin with a line snapped across all the rafters and keep the sheets parallel to the edge of the roof. Put the corner of the zip panel on the line and nail it. Pull layout from that first nailed rafter marking the sheet so that the rafters maintain the correct spacing as you work your way across the roof. The end of the panel should split the rafter. You pretty much keep doing this over and over until you either run out of sheets or run out of roof. Hopefully it's the latter. This is the first time that I've used the zip roof decking. And um, we're actually pretty excited. We, we saw that video showing how well it stands up under you know hurricane force, winds and rain, just being taped. Um, and I think that that adds a degree of confidence for us when we're framing out a flat roof like this. We love EPDM, we love flat roofs and TPO. They work really, really well. But this definitely, being able to be dried in while we work before the roof goes on, it's gonna help us with our timeline. Uh, and if there's a failure in the EPDM at some point, the likelihood that we'd see that come right in right away is lower. So I feel like that's like an extra layer of protection that we've got in here. After now. the roof is sheathed, the crew seals the seams with zip system tape to provide weather protection and a significant amount of air tightness, which, during a quick project update, becomes the topic of a wintertime rooftop building science Steve, discussion. What's today? today we're going to finish uh, sheathing, uh, framing and sheathing the front eyebrow on the house. Um, get this uh, assembly totally buttoned up and dried in. And uh, and then move down to the the wall sheathing. Awesome. Yep. How's it? Looks beautiful. It's fantastic. It's uh, fast, dried in. Um, it's a bomber. It is the bomber, bomber, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of awesome. The technical word. Bomber. Looks good, doesn't it? I really am happy about this connection. And, um, and I think that I think that having this thing, this building tied together, waterproof, and quite honestly, airtight is uh, is a huge advantage at this point in the construction. It's gonna keep everything inside dry. True. I was thinking about that actually. You know, we just added all that. Um, all that insulation in the inside here, yep. right? Yep. So the house has suddenly went from two inches of cellulose, barely, yep. Yep. right? Yeah. And all the heat loss, it was keeping this deck dry and fighting against that saturated ox board that was sitting on top of it, right? Yeah. It was going and going and going for the last, like, yeah. probably, uh, what, 80 years, 90 yeah. years it's been doing that. Now we just added all this fluff. 
and we lost all of our drawing potential. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But we're airtight. Airtight. And if you put your vapor awesome. control on your ceiling, yeah. like with a tape or with a paint, I... Which the 18 layers of paint on the plaster and lath probably... Uh, have a perm rating of 0.1. Maybe. Ish. And it's a pretty good air control layer as well. <laughs> so the one key that I noticed that I went through and did, and we still have, I still want to address though, is there were top plate penetrations that are air leak pathways. So I found a handful of them, I can foamed them, but these two pipes right there, I did not, because I wasn't sure how they were gonna deal with those. My assumption is, is that you're gonna, the plumber's gonna need to cut out um, a square out of each of these to sleeve, at least this one. And so what I want to remember to do is when they cut that out, depending on what they do with that, we got to get down to the ceiling level and air seal that. Those are the, those are the only two ones that I'm concerned about. That seems pretty doable. Yeah, piece of cake. Because then all you do then is take some of that, that uh, zip uh, stretch tape and just get right around that pipe. They're super stretchy? The stretch, yeah. We also have the liquid flash, yeah. which we can you take a putty knife yep. and we can build up a pretty good layer. Yeah. That's pretty good stuff. Yeah. Options. Yeah. Super tight. And that tightens up another episode of Building Resilience. Next time, we're going to finish covering the walls with the Zip R12 insulated sheathing. So we'll be measuring, snapping, cutting, nailing, and doing some custom window buck detailing with both retrofit and new framing details. Stay tuned and stay resilient.